Hey, what's up guys? Joe here with another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. Today in the shop, we got this beautiful 2016 Kia Optima. Now this Optima has a nice, beautiful paint job. Unfortunately, it's not shining its best simply because you have some light scratching, swirls, light oxidation, water spots. So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to enhance your beautiful paint job with this metallic flake to get it looking as best as possible. So before we hop into doing the rest of this video, I do want to mention that I have already washed this vehicle and we have already clayed it. We washed it with Clean Slate. Clean Slate is a surface cleansing wash, which pretty much removes any kind of waxes and previous coats of sealants that you've applied to the paint. The reason we do that is because we want to remove any kind of oils and, you know, any kind of films that are on there that could potentially kind of interfere with our results. So like I said, we are going to be doing some polishing today and we are going to be going over some few products. So I want to make sure that there's nothing that's on there that's going to go ahead and interfere with the results that I get from using these products. Second, we did clay bar the vehicle. We use a medium grade clay bar to remove the contamination on this vehicle. Like I said, this car looks great, but unfortunately it doesn't feel great and it doesn't look as great when you look at it up close. So we did the clay bar decontamination to remove that rough feel and any kind of embedded contaminants that are gonna interfere with their job. So like I said, you wanna make sure that before you start detailing, you're working on a clean and prepped surface. That's gonna give you the best results whenever you're using any of these products. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do after I've already washed and played the vehicle is I'm gonna polish. Now today, I'm gonna to be using our Torque 15 DA polisher, which is a 15 millimeter throw DA polisher and an orange hex logic cutting pad. The reason I'm using an orange hex logic cutting pad is because I'm gonna be conducting a one step polish, which pretty much means we're gonna be using our VSS scratch and swirl remover. So VSS works out great as a one step scenario to go ahead and cut off, you know, 90% of the light scratches, swirl marks, water spots, and light films of, you know, um, oxidation to clean up the paint in just one single step. So what VSS is, it's a cutting compound and a refining polish in one. So as you work the product, you're gonna be cutting those light scratches, swirls, and any kind of you know, imperfections that are in the paint. While you're working the product, it's gonna go ahead and break down. It does contain those diminishing abrasives, which break down into a fine polish. And as you're working the product, you begin to refine the surface by simply cleaning it up, removing any kind of micro marring, micro scratching, and you get that nice, beautiful, high shine clarity finish. So now that we're ready to polish, the paint is prepped, it's clean, it's dust free, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to the polishing process. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab VSS, and since I'm gonna be working on the hood first, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna apply five pea-sized drops. So the way I like to do is I just spin the backing plate as you're going around, and get nice five pea-sized drops, and you're good to go. You can set that down, close your spout, and then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab some pad conditioner spray and you're going to want to saturate your pad just by giving it two light sprays and what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and condition your pad so it's not rough it's not dry you have that nice condition that moistened uh, foam that's going to go ahead and allow you to go ahead and just cut without you know building up any excess heat that's going to you know potentially be a factor for burning your paint so with that being said we're going to go ahead and move over to the vehicle and whenever you're working with your vehicle or whenever you're polishing, we always recommend wrapping the cord over your shoulder so that it doesn't kind of drag onto your paint. I mean, as you can imagine, if I had it like this, you know, it'd be hitting the fender right here and it'd be rubbing against the fender and you can actually damage the paint. So don't do that. Make sure to wrap your cord over your shoulder. I'm gonna do a two by two section here just because I wanna be in control and I wanna understand what VSS is gonna work for this vehicle. So like I said, Whenever you're working the product, you wanna make sure that you kinda of have like a control section. So this would be my first attempt. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get the product and I'm just gonna to go to blot it out into the section and always be wary about your body lines. So on this hood, you actually have two body lines to pay attention to. You have this one here and then you have another one that kind of concaves towards the bumper right here. So you wanna make sure that you work this surface in different angles. You don't wanna just kind of, you know, stay on top of that body line or, you know, work it diagonally on that body line because if you apply too much heat or if you're on a high speed setting and you stay on these body lines, you could potentially burn the paint, which you don't wanna do. So that's just because on these body lines, usually the edges, they don't really hold as much clear coat. So they're easy to burn and they're easy, you know, they retain a lot of heat very easily. So if you're spinning very fast, if you're using a rotary polisher, you know, if you're not being careful, that could potentially be a factor. So 
just be careful with those body lines. I don't want to scare you, but just be, you know, cautious about that. So now that it's all blotted out, I'm going to go uh, spread it on speed setting one. All right, now that the product is spread out, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to speed setting six, and I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much break down this product. You wanna pretty much use it until the product becomes clear. And when I'm using the polisher, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. All I'm doing is holding it with my hand and just making sure that the backing plate is nice and flat onto the panel. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I'm like kind of just not really applying pressure, if I'm at an angle like this, the backing plate is just going to oscillate, which means it's just going to move in one direction. So it's just going to kind of vibrate. So you're not really going to be having that spinning action, that dual action. All you're going to be doing is, you know, it'd be kind of equivalent if you're just waxing the car, which as you guys know, if you're waxing your car, you're not really cutting the paint. All you're doing is applying something on the paint. So this would pretty much be like as, I was, as if I was just kind of like, you know, massaging the product onto the paint without actually working into it. So make sure your backing plate is nice and flat. You don't have to, you know, press down on it to the point where you're going to, you know, make your, your, your pad super flat. Just have enough pressure on there so that this stays nice and flat and, you know, parallel to the panel you're working on. So now that you're done, bump it up to speed 76 and we'll be back right now when it's done. All right guys, so now that we're done polishing, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the product. As you guys can see on camera, the product became translucent. It's not as concentrated as when I first started applying it and spreading it out. It's nice and smooth and you can pretty much tell that when you grab a nice finishing towel and you buff off the excess of the polish. So nice strokes, Just wipe it right off. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my LED inspection light so you guys can check out these results. So you guys look on camera, I'm not sure how well it catches it, but you see that nice, beautiful metallic flaking. I honestly don't even see any scratching whatsoever. And if I go over here to the left side, you'll see all those scratches and swirls. Like I said, I'm not sure how well the camera catches it, but you know, you still have the metallic flake on this side, but it's not as noticeable simply because it's being clouded by all those scratches and swirls and it just looks very nasty. It doesn't look that great. Like I said, I'm not saying the, bat, the paint was in a super bad condition, but it could have looked way better than what it is. So go back over here, no scratches, no swirls, you know, I'll point this light in different angles so you guys can see this isn't any kind of magic tricks. We're not trying to fool anyone. The paint is nice. It's crystal clear. You see that metallic flake for what it is as opposed to this side, which kind of looks more, it doesn't look as bright blue. You know, you kind of see more of like a white haziness to it and you see all those scratches, those swirls. All right, guys, so now that you guys have seen the results, I have my work cut out for myself. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this vehicle, and then I'll be back once we're back with our next step in the process. All right, guys. We're done polishing the car and honestly, it looks amazing just by that. And we haven't even got to the good stuff yet. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be applying wet mirror finish, which is a glaze. Uh, what is a glaze you may ask? Now a glaze is not a wax and it's not a sealant. A glaze, what it is, is it's a chemical that pretty much sets a foundation for your paint. What it does is it fills in light scratches, swirl marks, imperfections that are in the paint without you having to do much work. Now, I know we just polished the entire vehicle, but I still like to follow it up with the coat of glaze, like I said, just to fill in any kind of microscopic level scratches that I can't see, but that are on there. 
Now, this is gonna do great at you know, pretty much giving you that full depth, that full clarity. It's gonna enhance that luster, it's gonna enhance that shine, and it's pretty much gonna reflect off of any other coat that you apply over it. So we are gonna be applying a wax to this. Like I said, this is gonna go ahead and enhance our wax. So if you're looking for something that's gonna pretty much be better than a wax or take your wax experience to the next level, my best recommendation is to apply a glaze before you apply your wax so that you get the best result possible. So with that being said, I still have my polisher right here in front of me. Now a glaze can be applied by hand or by machine. With this product, you're not working into the paint, you're simply applying it just like you would a wax. So luckily for me, I still have my machine here and I have a blue finishing pad here that I'm gonna go ahead and put on my machine right here real quick because I'm gonna be applying the glaze by machine. Now, we get a lot of questions, what's better? Do you, what's better, applying the glaze by hand or by machine? Applying the wax by hand or by machine? Honestly, it's the same thing. Personally, I feel like you get a better spread with the machine and you don't use as much product simply because of the fact that when you're working it with the machine, the machine kind of does the work for you. So it kind of creates and it mimics the same motion that you start off with throughout the entire vehicle. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm pretty sure it still has a cap. So we'll remove that cap right quick. Brand new bottle. We'll put our spout back on there. Give it a good shake before you start using it. And then you're gonna go ahead and apply, same thing, five pea size drops. So you can do one, two, three, four, five, and you're good to go. Close your spout just so that if you drop your bottle, your product doesn't leak all over the place. So now that our pad is ready, we have a product sitting on there, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the cord over our shoulder. And when you're using the glaze, when you're applying the glaze, it doesn't necessarily matter too much for using pad conditioner because I'm not gonna be applying this on a high speed setting. Same concept, blot your product out. And then you're gonna turn it on on speed setting one. And you're simply gonna work the product into the surface. Like I said, you're not working it, so don't throw it on the highest speed setting. Speed setting one, you're good to go. Nice even coat throughout the hood. Let's get this done. And we're done. All right guys, so you guys saw how easy and fast it was to apply the glaze by machine. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and let the product sit on the vehicle for about 15 minutes, simply because uh, wet mirror finish does contain microswell fillers. So we wanna give it time to go ahead and break down and fill into those imperfections in the paint. So we'll be back in 15 minutes once the product is fully flashed and we'll wipe it off with the microfiber towel. All right guys, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. We're gonna go ahead and proceed to wiping up the wet mirror finish. So I'm gonna be using a nice soft plush towel and I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off and check out that shine, that crystal clarity. The paint is glass smooth. The towel is just like, you know, gliding right over this paint and it just picks it up no problem. So like I said, when you apply your product by machine, you get a nice, even uniform coat and I can pretty much buff off this entire hood with, you know, just a few seconds. I'll do the entire thing, comes right off. And like I said, the shine is like really immaculate. It looks very good. You know, I'm pretty sure this looks a lot better than the day the owner picked it up from the lot. The hood is in a really great condition. And now we are ready to move on to the next step in this detailing process, which is applying our wax. And now the moment you guys have all been waiting for, we're gonna be applying our wax on this vehicle. Now, you guys see this right here, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this one before. This is our Lava Luminous Glow Paste Wax. Now this right here, it's a hybrid paste wax, which pretty much means it takes the kind of, it takes the texture of a cream wax, but it gives it the properties in a uh, paste form, or well, semi-paste form, as you guys can see the product. The product itself is kind of more of a liquidy texture, but this is a wax and hybrid sealant. So this right here is gonna go ahead and give this paint a deep wet shine and give it a deep coat of protection. Now, the reason I'm choosing this wax is because it's specifically made to enhance bright colors with a nice bright metallic pop. So if you have, like I said earlier in the video, any kind of pearlescent paint, candy paint, if you got a nice paint job that has a lot of flakes, you wanna go ahead and use the best, 
lava, paste wax, that's the one you want to go with. Now this one right here, I'm going to be applying by hand with a UFO applicator. Now this is just a foam applicator, nothing fancy. It's nice and smooth, so it's not going to scratch the surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and pretty much dab my applicator into the actual wax here. And you'll see it just kind of picks it up nicely. That is a good amount of product. You don't want to cake it. You don't want to, you know, scoop it in there. Just simply dab it in there. Get a nice amount that you can work with. And then when you apply it, same thing as like when you're applying any other thing, you just want to kind of dab it out onto the area. I usually get just like a light little coat and then I start spreading it left and right. Now, the thing with these paste waxes is they flash very quickly. So you can pretty much apply them and almost instantaneously wipe them right off. So I'll go ahead and do this section of the hood. Make sure to get this little edge as well. And I'm going to go ahead and pretty much give it another pass just to make sure I pick up any excess product that I didn't really use. And so I can spread it onto a different panel. Now I remember with this, you can go ahead and work it as fast as you can. I'll go ahead and grab just a little bit more and then I'll do the second half of the hood here. And same thing, just spread it. The foam pretty much melts this product. So as you're working the product, you know, the foam kind of generates heat and it kind of melts the product so that you can stretch it as much as you can so that you're not there wasting your product. Left and right, easy does it. And like I said, this paint, it's already looking so great. And this is gonna be our coating of protection and extra amount of shine. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. And like I said, when using a paste wax, especially like this one, you can pretty much buff it off instantaneously. So now that I've let that sit, I usually try to give, I try to make it a habit of giving it about 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute if you're working indoors. If you're working outdoors, I would say in as little as 20 seconds and you can pretty much buff it right off. And you'll see that just intense shine that it pretty much delivers on this vehicle. You know, on this paint, you honestly don't really even see the color. All you really see is that deep, vast kind of pearlescent ocean of metallic flake that's in this paint. So check that out. Wipes off nice and evenly. And remember, this is a wax, so we are pretty much protecting the paint by doing this as well. I'll wipe off that rest of the product. And check it out. The paint looks so amazing. If I flash my light on there, like I said, all you get is that nice pearlescent, that deep blue, you know, the metallic flaking that's on there gives it a nice vibrant shine, especially if this were outdoors, you know, if the sun was reflecting off of this, this paint would be glowing. So you guys saw how easy it was to get this paint from looking somewhat neglected to brand spanking new and even better. So that was done by just using a few different products. Like I said, we did polish and the reason I did polish was because I wanted to remove as much imperfections that were clouding the vision of this paint. So by polishing your paint, that's gonna give you the best possible outcome in terms of shine and clarity. Simply because you're not gonna have those scratches and swirls that kind of take away from the overall kind of shine that the vehicle has. So polishing, if you wanna have your best paint, the best paint game, polish your vehicle, that's my best recommendation. Secondly, applying a coat of glaze, we applied the wet mirror finish. The wet mirror finish is going to fill in any kind of microscopic leftover scratches and swirls that I didn't get with the machine, or maybe they're just too fine and not so noticeable that only the glaze can really fill it in. And that's going to give you a great foundation to reflect the paint. And like I said, anything above that. So like our paste wax, we applied that lava paste wax. You guys saw how easy it was. Goes on like butter, wipes off like butter get that nice instant high shine and protect the finish of your vehicle. Like I said, that lava paste wax is specifically designed for bright cars with pearlescent flake or any kind of metallic flaking if you wanna have that best possible shine. Lava Luminous Glow Paste Wax is what you wanna have on your ride. If you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe and turn on your post notifications bell so that you get an update whenever we post a brand new video. My name is Joey. This is Chemical Guys Detail Garage. We'll see you guys next time.